This is finally week nine yeah, 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 of the yeah. takeout. You guys have held together. I know, right? <laughs> this is uh, coming to you straight from Kiev, the Rev, and, and Pastor, Pastor Angie. Angie. And we are so excited that you guys can join us uh, as we debrief, as we come and just get a, a snippet of what we're going to look forward to, even as we go through the study of the New Testament together. And so we are smack uh, in the middle of Mark, uh, and I'm excited about Mark. It's a great book. Like I said, I consider it to be like the TikTok short version. Yep. Of what's happening in the <laughs> life of Jesus, uh, and so um, Kev, you're gonna take us. Kev, you're gonna take us about yeah. through it today. Yeah. yeah. So chapter seven, uh, chapter seven is funny. Again, we're getting a different camera angle uh, to the same story, and part of why the stories in the book of Mark seem to be shared in the other gospel is that. Mark was actually the first gospel to be mm. written down. Um, it's actually said that Mark got the story from Peter himself. And so the other gospels sort of use Mark as a building That's block. Right. So, right. so some of the stories then are repeated in the mm. other in the other gospels in that way. And so again now chapter seven, uh, you see this story repeated of just saying, you know, why are you honoring tradition mm. more than God's word? Uh, you're gonna see the story of um the story of the Seraphonician woman yeah. repeated, the woman who was coming to beg Jesus and just said, this is not for dogs. Yeah. And, and he, you know, um, and, you know, she's, she tarries in there. She holds uh, uh, that place and just uh, performs a miracle uh, for her life. Um, uh, but then chapter seven ends with, the, with, a, with a man who was uh, deaf and mute. Now, here's a story. I think it's last week that we shared that Jesus was, uh, uh, the Bible says that Jesus went to the vicinity of, left the vicinity of Tyre drew Sidon and went down to the Sea of Galilee into the region oh, of De- Decapolis, yeah. which is where he had sent Legion. Yeah. Remember the demoniac guy who was yeah. healed? That's why he had sent him to go and share how the Lord has shown him mercy. Yeah. And so this is, a story is now coming full circle. You know what I love? That when Jesus sends, Jesus sends people where he's about to go. Amen. In chapter 6, the Bible says he sent the disciples to the villages and towns that he was about to get That's into. Right. That's and right. so, and so we get to sort of prepare the way, like John mm. the Baptist, for Jesus to come. Amen. To come in. What a and so story. Yeah. It's very easy for you to be doing ministry to someone and feel like, man, mm. you know, no miracles, nothing is coming through. Uh, you know, the ground is not being cracked. Hey. You're preparing the ground, the the master is on the way. The master is on the way. Come on, come on. I think maybe for somebody who's feeling so discouraged in the season they're in, the situation with your family where you're trying to get breakthrough, Jesus is on the way. 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 And and healing and breakthrough is coming. Come on, that's it. I love it. Yeah, and they bring a situation. I think I've already seen people with, you know, evil spirits being healed. So this one is like, they're so dumbfounded. So they actually, like, dumbfounded. So they actually say, (laughs) <laughs> he makes even the deaf and mute speak. Yeah. Yeah. They're shocked. <laughs> yeah, what a shock. <laughs> <laughs> like they've not seen that. I think they've seen demons clean, but now they're like, whoa, this is next level. This is level. next level. Yeah. And I love that Mark keeps giving us the perspective of the power of God. Come on. And so there's so many miracles of healing many. the blind, mm. the mute, the lame. He keeps bringing all those miracles to show God came uh, to heal everyone. There's nothing, there's no situation that God cannot heal, that God yep. cannot intervene. Yes, yeah. and he has authority over it all. He does have authority. Yeah, in chapter, uh, now chapter 8, by the time you get there again, you're going to see the, the miracle or, you know, the multiplication of bread to feed the 4,000 4, repeated yeah. there. Um, something happens uh, after that because Jesus and these boys, they're again on the boat, they're going uh, to a different side um, and and he says, be careful of the east of the Pharisees and mm. that of the Herodians and the guys are like, yo, we forgot to bring bread. I know. You know, we didn't bring provision. <laughs> He's angry. He's because angry. Because we did the bar, the left. <laughs> yeah. And so the guys are like, Jesus sees that and he's like, guys, yeah. have you forgotten? Yeah. Why would you think I was asking for bread? Like, <laughs> in fact, I feel like they're like he's having a moment. Yeah. An emotional moment. <laughs> That's why he's upset because they weren't clicking. Yeah. Yet they had, and I love how Jesus says, don't forget, don't have amnesia mm. and forget the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the things that I'm able to do for true, you. True, true. And so he reminds them, how much How much did you have over from the video over there? Like 5,000. You got 12. How much did you have left over from the 4,000. Like, so why are you not understanding why are you stuck in this place where you think i won't provide yes i, I don't have this covered yes 
Yes, yeah. and the, I think it's in Luke or something where he says, and when I sent you to do to, to preach the gospel, did I not provide mm. for you when you were out there? And so he says, the, the problem is not provision. The problem is, is your capacity to keep remembering the miracles mm. of God. I believe that one of the devil's offenses against believers, believers rather, is spiritual amnesia. That's right. Once the devil has heard you forgetting what the Lord has done, then Jesus will actually ask you these questions. Well, are your hearts hardened? Oh. Because when you forget what God has done for you, your heart gets hardened. Yeah. When you forget how he provided for you in primary school, mm. how he took you through high school, how he provided for you in, in university, how he you know, gave you a spouse, how you didn't have money when your children were coming. Imagine. When you forget what God has done for you, and now you're faced into a situation, it's very easy for your heart to be hardened because you've forgotten what God did for you. And it's it, the crazy thing is that they're with Jesus. Come on. Like they're with the guy who yes. multiplied. Why are you worried about bread when you have the bread of life? <laughs> Imagine. <gasps> what a shock. What a shock. <laughs> but it then tells me this is the state of the human, of, oh, of come humanity. On. Come on. That we forget. Mm. And so we need to, and I'm remembering that book, Those Who those Forget. Those Who Forget. <laughs> I'm remembering it. But in my head, I'm like, then it means that if, if this is the state of humanity, mm. then maybe around you and make it a practice and a discipline to remember. Mm. I remember, I think, going for a meeting with uh, uh, Pastor M, I think it's Dr. Mucho who says, uh, create moments, mm. uh, Gladys Mitty, of, of, of thankfulness. True. So whether you walk out of the hospital, she says, buy a shoe mm. as a sign of thankfulness. Say, I walked <sighs> out of the hospital. Make it a, a practice. Come on. Do parties and celebrate. I mean, that's why I think they, they kept accusing Jesus of just being a party. Yeah. But I think it's also to remember. To rem- Levi just got just came into the kingdom and is following. Let's, let's party. throw a party. Matthew party. Yeah, let's have a Matthew party. So I'm like, create, don't be, create rhythms in your life mm. that are, are responses to what God is doing. Wow. That He has saved you from high school. That He has, um, you know, brought you to a place where you now have a job where you lacked. Yeah. Where He has provided for you that spouse. So I'm like, don't forget the anniversary. I know. Make it that moment to say, wow. whether it's just a day of prayer, let's pray together and thank God. Thank God for your birthday that you still get to see another year. Yeah. Remember how God has been faithful mm. when we come to the 31st. That's that rhythm. When we do, like, now we're going to be going towards Easter and, mm. you know, coming to it soon again. Remember what God has done for you in your year. True. So that our hearts don't become hard. Wow. Yeah. Like, you know, have the antidote to forgetting and leading to hardness of heart is a hard for gratitude mm. and and events that help you to remember. I love it. Come on, so mm, good. So sweet. I love that. And, and I guess that's why the next story is this guy who Jesus heals. Uh, he was blind, Jesus heals him. And he asks him, can you see now? He says, I see people, but only like trees. <laughs> and say, and so... Uh, and so Jesus gives him the second touch. Oh, hey, come by somebody. Second touch. for the second touch. Hey. There's a, a song in our local dialect. Mm. Uh, some of mm. the poets have sung. And it says, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. And it's so funny because I'm laughing at him because he has to do the... <laughs> 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 You have to drag it a bit. <laughs> but it's that. Give me a second look, God. I can't see clearly. I can't see what you're, how you're moving in my life. I can't see people for what they are. Mm. I see them as trees to be chopped down. Yeah, uh, you know, give me a second look. I'll see clearly. I think the hard thing about this story is, um, not the hard thing, the hard thing about us, our society and our, and our situation mm. right now and why this story encourages me is because many times we expect, we're in an ATM society, so mm. we expect um, everything to happen instantly. I went to church on Sunday, I had this <sighs> message, I'm going to expect immediate for healing. healing. Yeah, immediate deliverance. But sometimes things need a second touch. Oh, come it on. takes time. So good. And so to just tell God, I need that second touch. I need mm. that, that, that space where it's you're, you're, you're helping me move to my next level. Oh, come on. And so to come to God and say, Father, just have courage and boldness and say, I need that second touch. Wow. Um, because that's what I need to move forward in my situation. Yeah, and so we see Jesus healing immediately, but mm. we also see Jesus healing progressively. Yes. Gradually. And we don't get to choose how he heals. Mm. We just need to come back with our situation. Now, if g- this guy would have walked away with seeing people as trees, he would have remained yeah. there. But because he tarried long and said, Lord, I'm seeing people as trees, then he was able to be in a space to receive that t- second touch. Yeah, so don't do 
don't be afraid to be in the space of you know going for another worship night going oh, for another space of healing going yes. for another whatever it is going through a book a second time mm. we're doing a study a second time doing this word for us it's a second time we're doing oh, it this come year on. So good. tarry in the word it's that place that you might receive so your good. second touch and your so second, second healing so good that song is not going to leave my head now <laughs> It's there, it's stuck. I'm gonna go and sell for my children. I I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the story ends again. Jesus is predicting his death. Um, and you know, he's talking about you know what good you mm. know is a man if you gain the whole one and lose your soul. Mm. Uh, that's how much you know he wants you to be saved. You can gain it all, but when you lose your soul, what's a what's the point? Uh, and then now chapter nine. Mm. We we go back again to this transfiguration. I love it. <laughs> uh, again, the transfiguration is you know El- Moses and Elijah they come and they encourage Jesus uh, to go through uh, this process. Um, we looked at that when we were going through the book of Matthew, but there's something I would like us to look at. So so you know Peter is saying you know ah, can we build <laughs> I know, build a tent because yeah. he's starstruck. I mean Elijah and Moses are there. The guy's like okay, so what do I do? What do I say? Yeah. Your <laughs> yes. yes, can we build a tent for one for Moses, one for Elijah? You know what? First of all, I like that story because you know Jesus didn't introduce Moses and Elijah. Imagine when we are transfigured, when we become like Jesus, we'll be we'll there is that thing that we fell for knowledge, mm. we'll actually have it. Mm. Like Moses you know, Jesus didn't go meet Mr. Yeah. You know, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Moses meet, and then Moses didn't go like uh, 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 you know it was a summer, right? <laughs> he didn't do that. So he didn't he didn't <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but here's what happens the bible says in verse 8 suddenly when they looked around they no longer saw anyone with them except jesus mm, i love it that's that's the clarity of working with jesus yeah. when you see no man except wow, jesus wow. you don't see moses you don't see elijah you don't see a good teacher wow. you saw no man except, except jesus. jesus come on wow come on Beautiful. Yeah, because many times we put our hopes in different things. Can we build three tents? Hey, Peter, why are you equating Jesus with Moses and Elijah? He's the only one. He's my son. You know, listen to him. You know, see no man except Jesus. I love it. Yeah. See no man. In fact, what I like, let me just say what I also thought about when, when this happened. And it's it's a second time, but I thought about the spaces um, that I've been invited to by following. Mm-hmm. And because um, he, he, he took the three and he took them because when we talked about that last time mm. how he invited the three into spaces where they were intimate with come him. on so i thought about that and and it's true that in those moments they saw jesus mm. and the, the only man they saw was jesus and i'm like don't uh, take for granted the opportunities that you're in, mm. invited um to see and to see jesus and experience uh, mm. greatness mm. so i mean uh the fact that i mean y- you guys uh Will have just come from uh, Uganda. Mm. No, what's it called? Um, have just Nigeria. moved with, to Nigeria, Pastor yeah. M. And you guys have had the opportunity to get close to a space True. to see Jesus. Mm. And so to then say, uh, f- for many of us who are DG leaders or whatever, um, you know, don't be afraid to invite people to that intimate space. <sighs> Whether it's your prayer time, mm. you know, whether it's because you maybe do a walk of prayer, invite people to walk with you and pray with Come you on. that they may see Jesus. Come on. If you if you go to a retreat somewhere, don't invite don't don't be afraid to invite your three, mm. your two into that intimate space mm. that they may see the Those are the God. spaces where people see no man except Jesus. Exactly. I love that. So it's not that they see that you don't rely on your strength. Come on. That you don't oh. rely on your own. They see you praying. Yeah, they, they see, see you fasting. relying, they see you leaning on him. Mm. They see you push through the struggle to lean uh, on your father. Mm. So I feel like uh, when I see this invitation, I see the beauty and the privilege that this man mm. got to see by being with Jesus. We invited them into that special place. Yeah. So as DG leaders, uh, what are those intimate spaces that you need to invite people into? Wow. Um, because we make we can make them our own intimate time, but mm. we need to invite people there as wow. well to see and learn wow. that they may see Jesus. Yeah. yeah, I think when they come from this mountain of trans- transfiguration, we're gonna see another caution to fathers as well. Mm-hmm. I truly believe it was. Uh, basically, they come down and they find this commotion happening between people. I think the Pharisees are there mm-hmm. as well, the disciples, and there's this father who comes. Uh, and Jesus comes and says, what are you arguing about? Verse 16, mm. verse 17, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by a, a spirit who has robbed him of his speech. 
Whenever he sees him, he throws him down on the ground, forms in his mouth, mm. gnashes his teeth, uh, be, be, becomes rigid. I ask your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Look at how Jesus says, verse uh, 19 towards the end, he says, how long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Oh, come on. Know, so right? good. Why are you taking him to the disciples? Why are you taking Bring the boy to me. And so Jesus says, bring them to me. Let me be the one to heal. Let me be the one to respond. But here's what happens. The, uh, so they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a conversion. Mm. You know, it's usually darkest before mm. dawn. Maybe some of you are in that space where, where you are seeing Jesus in the vicinity, but the situation just got wow. harder. Wow. You just got thrown down again. You were thought you were getting up, but you just fell down. Your business went through another situation. Your family wow. went through another wow. situation. Your marriage went through another situation. Hey, you are closer to Jesus now because he just said, bring, yeah. them, to me. bring them to me. Now, here's what is happening. You can imagine all that is happening. The boy is convulsing. The father is waiting. The disciples are watching. Guys are just, you know, reeling from transfiguration. And then what does Jesus do? He's not even harakishain. Mm. He talks to the father and says, just ask the boy's father, how long has it been like this? Mm -hmm. ah! Allah. <laughs> the boy so is you the boy yeah. really, there's, a, there's an urgency right here. How long has it mm. been like this? But I want you to see something, Pastor Angie. The father answered from childhood, it, he answered, verse 22, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can, now listen, but if you can do anything, take pity on him. No. On us. On us. On? Have compassion on us and help us. And help us. Before he was bringing the boy. Oh, now it's become an ass thing. But Jesus wanted the man to be included. Mm. Have pity on us. But Jesus is still not done with him. The Bible says, if, so the man says, uh, uh, um, uh, if, so you know, Jesus responds, if you can, Jesus said, everything is possible to the one who believes. Now look at the father. Immediately the boy's father, the, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome. It moves from the boy to us to me. You know, Pastor Angie, it's not so much that God wants to heal your family mm. as much as he wants to heal you. Amen. Or your marriage, you know, spouse as much as he wants to heal mm. you. Or, you know, your business, you know, partners and everything as much as he wants to heal mm. you. And so sometimes we bring situations to Jesus. That's okay. But Jesus is, wants more than the situation he wants you. Amen. Come on. Mm. By the time the guy is done, it's his pain that is being built. Sorry. Amen. It's not even the boy's pain. So sweet. I love that. I love that. I love yeah. that. It's a call for fathers, not just to pray for the children, but to remember God wants you as well. Amen. He wants you in the equation. Yeah. He wants and it for you. And your belief can save our whole family. Come on. Your belief. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the honesty of the father. Mm. I, mm. I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me and yeah. my unbelief. Yeah. Yeah. Goes down, just sort of does another uh, conversation, almost like the, the yeah. Sermon on the Mount part of it. I love how it ends, chapter 9, verse 50. Uh, you can read that, chapter 9, verse 50. Chapter 9, verse 50, it says, Salt is good, mm. but what is salt if it has lost its saltiness? Mm. How will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves mm. and be at peace with one another. Come on. Mm. You know, there's only one way of salt losing its saltiness. Mm -hmm. And that is when you water it down. Yes. You know, every time I'm cooking, I do cook every now and then. Every, every now and then. Every now and then. Faith, do we believe him? Yeah. 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 So, faith. Like when I want to cook like, you know, chicken enchilada or, you know, um, <laughs> one of those other ladders. Yeah? <laughs> Does you both think of anything else? <laughs> one of these, if you over salt, mm. I marshal up the wederero in me and they just add and water. water? <laughs> Really? So the I'm only you, way. So water has its purpose. Water has yeah, its purpose. Don't just keep it. I know, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the only way for salt to lose its saltiness is to water it down. Mm. As you go through God's word, I hope you are allowing it to have its full effect Amen. on you. Don't yeah. allow it to water it for you down. And I like we say that have peace with one another because many times. We water God's word down, especially when it comes to dealing with one another. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, God has said forgive, but do you know the yeah. issues? I'm watering it down. God has said, you know, be merciful, but you know, do you know what they did? I'm watering that down. word down. I'm losing the saltiness. No, that word. Come on. That's so beautiful. Do mm. not water it down. Come on, don't. You are yeah. created to be salt and light, and light. in this world. Yep. So don't water it down. I pray that this week, mm. the word of the Lord is jumping alive at you. I pray mm. that you're experiencing miracles, signs and wonders. I pray that you're getting a deeper understanding yeah. of what God wants to do in you, through you, in your DG, yep. even as you open up yourself to this word. Yes. Mm. And then by the time we read Sunday, we're going to be finishing out. Uh, different stories there, but uh, the story of the rich young ruler really intrigues me. Beautiful. Come on. Yeah. Um, basically, this guy has all these riches. He comes, he's like, once he is prostrate, he's a rich guy. Everyone, like, the spirit is moving. The guy is falling down, but Jesus is like, I know. Mm. Everyone falls down until you ask for their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting because you see, even when he, the whole point of uh, uh, chapter 10, Mark mm. chapter 10, is this thing of guys being hardened because he oh, talks about yes. the divorce thing. Mm. And he says, you know, I want you to have these hearts that are like children, True. childlike faith. Come on. And then it comes to the story, even of the young ruler mm. who, in childlike faith, you're like, yeah, take my wealth. Yeah. But, but, wow. um, but in, instead, we hold on to things, especially as grown-ups. In mm. child like faith, you're like, you ask them for their sweet, they'll be like, you're the one who gave it to me. Mm. Uh, fine, I'll give it back to you. There may be some resistance, but once yeah. you have that trust, they'll be like, I'll give it to yeah. you. And so I feel like God is still saying, have that child like faith. Come be on. willing to let everything go because mm. I'm your father. Yeah, There's a reason I'm not uh, I'm taking this from you. Wow. But you have to live in that surrender. Um, and trust him. Well, so let's check ourselves from hardened hearts, mm. whether it's by forgetting, you know, the, yeah. the things that God has done for us, whether it's, a, you know, watering God's down, God's word down yeah. so that we're not even able to hear him yeah. in the next season or not obeying his word and therefore we become hardened in yeah. our hearts. Right. And this is a dichotomy of what God is saying and what you want to do for yourself. And so I think that's, you know, what we're going to we say this week. You know, check yourself. Where have you been hardened yeah. uh, in your life? Where have you, you know, failed to have a heart for gratitude? Where have you failed to obey? And therefore, your heart has been hardened in many ways. I love it. This mm. week has been so sweet. Come on, it's so amazing. Yeah, can't wait to see you guys next week. God bless you. Thank you all. This has been The Takeout. Be blessed.